the ongoing revelations about Downing Street parties are doing serious damage to the Conservatives' standing among the British public. YouGov conducted polling across Monday and Tuesday this week. So that was while news about the Downing Street party on the 20th of May was breaking. So that polling shows Labour on 38%, up one from the week prior. The Conservatives on 28%, down five from the week prior. So you've got a huge shift there and a 10-point lead for Labour. Really significant, really different from, from what we've been seeing over the past weeks and months. Now, because it was such an eventful week, YouGov did two polls this week. Normally, we just get one a week. They did another poll this Wednesday and Thursday. So as you'll know, Wednesday was Boris Johnson's non-apology in Parliament. So we can see how that shifted public opinion, how that changed the public mood. And the results are in. Um, so good news for Boris Johnson. The apology might have persuaded a couple of people because the Tories are up one on 29. Unfortunately for Boris Johnson, Labour are up two on 40. So we now have an 11-point lead for the Labour Party. Um, not many people have bought that Boris Johnson didn't realise he was a party. He thought he was at a work meeting. Aaron, that 11-point gap is is massive. How low will the Tories need to go before Tory MPs think we've got to get rid of this guy quickly because there is a certain, you know, there is a certain position you can go to in the polls where it's very, very difficult to recover. There's a few dynamics here. I mean, there was some analysis by the New Statesman. I think it was on this YouGov poll. There is not a deluge of people going from the Conservatives to the Labour Party over this. So I think from from one of these polls, not both of them, I mean, that's, that's a general trend anyway. But from mm. one of these two YouGov polls, and I believe it's this one, only 5% of 2019 Conservative voters are going to Labour. 5%. Very low. Hey, it's better than nothing, but it's very low. I think about 33% aren't going to vote. They're apathetic. 47% staying with the Conservatives. 6% going to the, the Reform UK party, the Lawrence Fox thing, 6%. So more, more 2019 Tory voters going there than Labour. Uh, and then you've got the Lib Dems. I think they're somewhere in the teens. So this is a, this is a, this is an, a striking and important political issue, both for the Conservatives and for Labour. And it shows opportunities for both. You know, the situation reading that, can be salvaged. I'm not saying the Conservatives keep their majority from 2019. That does look very unlikely, but it can be salvaged to some extent because only 5% of those voters in that poll are going to the Labour Party. So what that tells Labour is, hey, look, we've got a 10-point lead and we're not even actually attracting that many Tories. That says we don't need to win over loads of critical Tories because so much of their votes turned off by Boris Johnson. And if we do, that's only going to go higher. So I'm not saying it's necessarily a negative thing for Labour. It's an opportunity, but they shouldn't rest on their laurels. Equally for the Conservatives, they'll be saying, well, look, if we can get that 6% back from the Reform Party, if we can get loads of those apathetic voters back on side, I might be able to keep my seat wherever that may be. So it's a very volatile situation, Michael. And I think for those of us watching and thinking, wow, Labour, 10 points ahead, a few things to keep in mind. One poll in 2018, I believe, had... Labour on 45% under Jeremy Corbyn. Look where he ended up. Politics right now, wherever you are, is incredibly volatile. Just go back to last May. The Conservatives had an extraordinary set of local election results. And now Boris Johnson, as I said earlier, his personal approval ratings are where Jeremy Corbyn's were after the 2019 general election. So things change very quickly. If you go back to the uh, Miliband Cameron years between 2010 and 2015, there were polls where Labour were 10 points ahead of the Tories didn't count for anything on election day in uh, in May 2015. So it's a long way off. Of course, it's incredibly positive. And I think it's almost certainly curtains for Boris Johnson. But I, I think it would be wishful thinking still, two years out from a general election, with you know boundaries still being changed, to say that this necessarily means a, a Labour government or a Labour majority. I think saying a Labour majority is priced in when they're only getting 5% of Tory voters, I think is a very brave claim to make. But look, this is obviously very, very good for Labour. It's obviously very bad for the Conservatives. Question is, can Labour drive at home? And how are the Tories going to respond? That point of where these people are going is an important one because it, a similar thing happened to the Labour Party actually after 2015, which was that they went really low in the polls, but people hadn't really shifted to other parties. And if they had, it was to small parties like the Greens or the Lib Dems who tend to get squeezed in general elections anyway. The general election comes around. People have a, a changed impression of, of Jeremy Corbyn because he's going on television more, and they see that this is a two-horse race, and then basically they all flood back to Labour. So it is very possible that all of these people who've 
you know, said they're no longer going to vote the Conservatives, but have switched to don't know or have switched to smaller parties like Reform UK. When it comes to a general election, and again, it's a two horse race, they could come flooding back to the Conservatives, or especially um, if, if the Conservatives have a new leader, or if Boris Johnson's career has got a new lease of life, and he's somehow saved himself. Although, as Aaron says, his, his personal ratings are now so low, I don't think we do have examples of anyone recovering from those levels. Obviously, Jeremy Corbyn recovered from fairly low um, approval ratings just before the 2017 general election. But once they fell after that, they, you know, they never really recovered. And I think Boris Johnson could easily be at that terminal point right now. So just a just a matter of time um, as the, the Tory MPs work out precisely when they're going to stick in the knife. 